Good morning. Thanks for praying for us last night. I believe we needed your prayers last night, perhaps more than any other time in my 25 years here. That sounds dramatic, but we've never been through anything like this in the 25 years that I've been here. Please keep praying. I wish I could report some news about a regathering date. All I can say right now is that we don't have that date settled yet. Our board of elders and deacons is a cross-section of our congregation, and we are not yet of one mind on the timing of our regathering. We did not have the aha moment that I think we were praying for. I'm sorry. I feel in some respects like we have failed you, and honestly, this is breaking my heart. But this is a very complicated issue. You might say, why is this so hard? Well, here are some reasons. Conflicting and changing information. Each of us has a context that influences our view. There is currently, as you know, a tug of war going on between the federal and state government. We are attempting to apply Romans 13 to the best of our ability, and that means following the governor's orders. I remind you that being exempt from the penalty is not the same as being exempt from the executive order. We have to think through these things clearly. There are four things that are driving our decision. One, we are asking how do we best honor God. We are His church, after all. Second, what is the most loving action for our church family and for our community? Third, what are we learning from the medical community about how to have church safely? And fourth, if we cross the line from the governor's orders, what will be our criteria for doing so with a clear conscience? These are complicated issues. Some of you are going to accuse us of fear. That's far from the truth. These men are my friends. And I don't agree with all of them. But I'll tell you this, they're not scaredy cats. They're not chickens. And they all want to meet as badly as we do. Please keep that in mind. Some of you will accuse us of not caring for the people of our church family. You should have heard our prayers. You should have seen our tears. Believe me, we care about you. Some of you will give up on us. I ask you to stick with us, please. What are we supposed to do in the meantime? Well, number one, I'd like you to check your own motives. I'm doing that myself. Do you want to meet out of consumerism? That is, do you want to meet because I want to meet and we get what we want? Or do you want to meet because this is America and I have my rights, you know, and I ought to be able to meet when I want to, where I want to? Or do you really want to meet because you want to obey God's command and you want to meet to encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Something else you can do is schedule a house church. Gather safely with others in your own home. Stay connected. Open your house. Or go to a park with some other people. Plan on Sunday to watch the service in a group. Be creative with this. The church is more than teaching. It's the people. It's connecting to people. And you can do that. Whether we get our date set or not, you can have a house full of people and enjoy their company and the teaching of God's Word at the same time. Live connected. Reach out to people you miss. Find out how they're doing. We're not the first church in the last 2,000 years of God's work that has had to work through dispersion and difficulty. Next, remember that this is a test it really is, of our love for one another. And this is not as simple as people want to make it. This is also not a conspiracy, but this is spiritual warfare. And the enemy would love to destroy us during this vulnerable time in the church's history. 
please keep praying. Honestly, I'm as disappointed as many of you are about all this, maybe more. This is my life. It's my calling. It's my passion. And I've poured the last 25 years of my life into this church. And I feel like part of me is being amputated, to be honest. I'm not whining. I'm just talking to you straight. Now, I do believe we'll get through this with God's help. And I'll see you tomorrow to talk about how we're going to do that. God bless you. Have a good day.